Preset, talk about points that I think that need to be talked about. We'll try to make this as quick as possible. I'm going to start at the beginning. I had the gate on. Here's my threshold. Here's my decay. The decay, I set it low because it actually acts as an overall treble cut. And you can set it higher and see what the results will be for you. This is a setting that I prefer with my attitude. It makes the, the bass feel a little darker and it sounds a lot more like my wife replica. This is a setting that I actually spent the most time on. To get this setting, I actually ran this preset into two amps and two cabinets. And I was trying to get an idea of how the treble and bass separated in two cabinets, how it sounded and how it felt. And this is the separation that I came up with. So we have that. Next, the Wolfer channel runs into the Ampeg SVT4 Pro. <laughs> tell it's just low end. Here's these settings. The EQ is off. When I'm playing live I usually play really loud. I don't I don't need this. When I'm recording direct or I'm playing low volumes sometimes I'll turn this on but as you you'll see the EQ is pretty weird. A lot of cutting of high end. I'm using the 810 cabinet, not to emulate an 810, but the more to use it as a high and low cut and to save an extra block. So you can see what's going on here. I like the reflection set at 20%. To me, it just makes the low end and the high end feel slightly disconnected. I think it's more of an ear trick. And it like two cabinets set together, the low end hits you at a slower rate. And to me, this kind of feels that way. Next, I'm using two three band compressors to slam the front end of the Pierce. And you're, you're going to see that the settings on both of them are the same except for one frequency. So here's what we have. Now, these are slightly digitally clipping the signal. And then that's hitting the pierce, which is kind of taming the signal back down again. So if someone says, hey, your compression set too high, and yes, I know, but it was done on purpose to hit the front end of this pierce block to make it react more like a real pierce. So here's the clean. <laughs> The other one is set up the exact same way except for the low crossover frequency. The other one was 520, this is 510. Why not set them the same? That's a good question. But the crazy side of me has convinced myself that changing one of these off actually affected the way the mid-range frequencies were processed. Um, it doesn't make any sense, but sometimes we fool ourselves into believing silly things. And I do it a lot. They are both stereo. I found that the stereo compression acts and feels a little more like a real compressor. 
Then we're into the pierce. This would be the distortion of the pierce. <laughs> that there's the settings the treble control i want to talk about that a little bit on this pierce channel one the the treble control will also act as a secondary master volume it does not just affect the treble it really does affect the overall signal so i'm using the treble control as a master volume. Here's the actual master it is set pretty low. Let's see. You can see it's it's not just treble. The all the entire volume came up just changing the treble control back down to four four all right channel two is the clean these are pretty much the exact settings i used on my real pierce and they translated the to channel two just beautifully the boost is so i can have two distortion channels. The limiter, there's the settings and the overall volume of the Pierce unit here. Next is the little Deluxe comp. This will be replaced by the new Billy Sheen comp. I'll pretty much guarantee it. These are the settings that I felt best represented what I hope that compressor is going to do. And on the Deluxe, the, when the knee is set this high, the whole compressor feels better to me as well. Parametric EQ. The clean channel has a lot of EQing happening, and mostly it's lows and highs. So what is happening here is you can see I have a lot of low cut going on. Now this is going to work with the other low cut coming a little later in the parametric, and it's going to create more of a gradual slope. So it feels more natural in the low end rolling off rather than like this just harsh brick wall. There's what we have in the mids. Now my cabinets are very efficient in the mid range. So I felt like I needed to bring these down a little bit to flatten, to flatten out the mid, the mid curve in the uh, overall response. And the highs are going to do the same thing. So these are going to work with the high cut to create more of a gradual slope so it feels more natural. Here's my low cut and my high cut. No level change. The mixer, I have this set where both of these are at zero and that's for probably 65% of my shows. It'll be like this. I do get into a situation where I'll my rig may be in a corner and the low end just feels like it's just booming. And I can go here and turn my low channel down without having to change my preset. And the same thing if I'm kind of stuck in the middle of the room and I feel like I can't hear my highs, well then I can turn up my highs there. There is the output. The next thing we want to talk about is global, global EQ. My low cut for everything, woofer and highs is set to 66 Hertz. At low volumes, that's too much cut. 
then I can just go in here and I can bring back in the low end that I feel like I need. When I play really loud, I want the lows to be cut up that high so I can turn my speakers up and not have to worry about them and let the room and the environment help carry the bass. All right, next. Now the same thing, the way I use the parametric EQ on the, on the treble channel, I'm doing a very similar thing with the overall. So here you can see, I have another parametric setup really low with a fairly wide Q and a cut. This is going to help the 66 hertz before to create more of a gradual slope. So it feels a little more natural and it helps to get rid of some of the, the unwanted low end that may be hanging around. This is my estimation of where the high frequencies and the low frequencies are starting to cross talk a little bit and so we can get kind of hashy in that section so here i just set up a a fairly wide eq and it's not a lot of cut it's just enough to kind of leave room for the the low end to overtake the mids in that area And the high is going to do the same thing. It's going to create more of a gradual slope with the high cut that's coming next. Now, 2.8. When I'm playing loud, the speakers are going to be, they're going to be barking. A lot of treble. I want to cut those down so it's not ripping people's heads off, especially the distortion. If I play at a lower volume gig, I will definitely turn that up to around 3.4. I have played gigs before where I've ran it to around 4.7. But it, when I start getting that high, even at a low gig, a low volume gig, the distortion starts to really hurt. The frequency is that high. The next thing. The ins and outs. I have mine set to a line level input signal. If I set it to instrument, not only does it get, you know, 6 dB louder, but the low end just is way too much. I don't like it. And it does affect the low end, and that's what I'm doing. The output is a similar thing. I have it set to instrument. If I set it to line, not only does it get louder, but now the mid range is, for me, is too much. It's out of control at loud volumes. Low volumes and direct it has a nice effect. And I believe that is it.